All right, who remembers what's happening? Someone raise your hand and tell me what's happening in our story. Dylan. Um, Shh, Maylee. There's these two bad guys. Yep. Um, I can't remember their names. That's okay. But, um, um, Prince, the Prince and the Whipping Jimmy. Jimmy. Yep. Oh, um, like escaped, like ran away or something. Yep, but where are we at? Like, what happened last? Jeremiah? Um, the bandits um, raided a, a remote and took a test to go deliver it. Yep. Yeah, so the remember, the, the bandits wanted them to write this note. Jemmy, because, hold on, because he couldn't read and write. So Jemmy's writing this note to the king. It's like a ransom note. What else, Dylan? Um, the two bad guys think that Jemmy is the prince. Yes, that's the other thing that happened. Remember, they think Jemmy is the prince because he's the one who can actually read and write. All right, so chapter 10 is called, In Which Prince Brat Lives Up to His Name. Hold your nose, Billy clapped a leery eye on the rat catcher's son. Prince, you take me for a precious fool. Send your whipping boy to blab out where, where, where he hid, eh? The king will come chopping down every tree if he finds out we're nested in the forest. Jemmy assumed a princely air of indifference. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then tote the message yourself. It's no skin off my ear if you never get back alive. He filled his mouth with bread and herring. I declare, this is tasty. Prince Brat scoffed under his breath. He hadn't shown a moment's interest in Jemmy's scheme to free him. Their eyes met and clashed. Gah, Jemmy thought. He's fuming like a stovepipe at being unprinced. He'll have me charged with treason. I'll stand guard over the prince, said Cutwater. You're the one to go, Billy. Me, hooted the big man, me, that they sing songs about and pinch their noses? At the first whiff of garlic, it would be off with the head of Hold Your Nose Billy. Unlikely, corrected Jemmy. True, Papa would have you tortured a mite to loosen your tongue, but he wouldn't have your head, not Papa. He favors slow boiling in oil. The effect on the outlaws was instant. Hold Your Nose Billy's jaw dropped. Sweat broke out across his face like raindrops. Cut water, your skin and bones. You could slip in and out of a keyhole. I'll guard the prince. Fuck, Billy, I don't fancy being boiled to a crisp. The hairy outlaw gave a loud and decisive snort. We'll send the whipping boy. Jemmy held back a sigh of relief. And my crown with him. Your golden crown, blurted out Cutwater. Not by half, we won't. Jemmy made the pretense of blazing up with impatience. Simpleton, I swear there are not two more ignorant cloven-footed blockheads in the land. Prince Brat shot Jemmy a quick thunderscowl look. Stop it, he whispered harshly. Don't give them the rough side of your tongue. You'll get me whipped. Jemmy ignored him. Donkeys, he continued. Before the day is out, dozens of villains will be will deliver up false claims. Only my crown will convince Papa that you are the genuine villain. Hold your nose, Billy began to pace, munching garlic cloves as if they were grapes. Finally, he tipped the crown off his head and flung it to Prince Brat. Whipping boy, deliver it to the king. If he doesn't follow our instructions to the letter, the prince will be done for, Cutwater snickered, drawing a knife-like finger across his throat. And blab all you want, added the outlaw. We'll pack the prince off to a different hiding place. By its smelly tail, Prince Brat tossed aside the uneaten herring. Without showing the slightest concern for Jemmy's fate, he flicked a glance at the two outlaws. I'll deliver nothing, he exploded. I won't go back to the castle. All right, chapter 11 is called Containing a Great Deal of Shouting. Jemmy was struck dumb. Did Prince Brat have sand for brains? God, did he realize he could snatch up his crown and go free? It doesn't please me to take orders from common rascals, Prince, Prince Brat said coldly. 
It would please me to shake the teeth out of your confounded face, replied Hold Your Nose Billy. You may live in the castle, but you're only a whipping boy. Do as we say. I'll do what I choose, and I choose not to run your errands. Jemmy leapt up and gave the prince an angry flash of eyes. Jemmy from the streets gets these stubborn fits, he said, contrary as a mule. Let me have a word with him. I'll whip the mulishness out of him, exclaimed Cutwater, lurching forward. Prince Brat dodged out of his grasp and a sour smile crossed his face. I'll tear up your vile, your vile message the moment I'm gone and keep the crown for myself. Hold your nose, Billy, caught Cutwater's abrasive arm. Hold off, there's something in what he says. You think he's angling for a share of the reward, Billy? He likely is. The greedy little snipe, Cutwater bleated. How much do you reckon we can spare? This calls for private word. Let's parlay. Follow me. The moment the outlaws ducked out of the hut, Jemmy turned on his companion. Prince Blockhead, you should wear your crown to fend off woodpeckers. Imposter, how dare you insult me? You're enough to give the devil himself fits. Haven't I so muddled their brains they won't turn you loose? And your reward with me will be with royal squawk. The prince had crossed the wicker basket and snatched up an uneaten apple tart. He gobbled it down. I'll return to the castle when I'm ready, when I choose, and not a moment before. Jemmy's eyes narrowed sharply. He couldn't fathom what was stirring in the prince's mind. Could he, for once, be concerned for someone other than himself? It's not me you think you're protecting, is it? You? Knowing they'll knock the daylights out of me as soon as they find out I tricked them? The prince shrugged. You're quick, boy. You'll think of something. I've already thought it. Once you're up and gone, I'll slip away. Out into the forest, I'll be harder to catch than a flea. But I'm not leaving, said the prince firmly. God, but why? Is it your pa you're afraid of? Is that why you won't go back? The prince scoffed. He won't miss me. Of course he will. Let him wait and mind your own affairs, whipping boy. It is my affair. Do you reckon you're out on a lark with murderers outside? The murderers shuffled back into the hut. Hold your nose, Billy, fixed Prince Brat with a hairy smile. Never let it be sung about that me and Cutwater ain't generous to fault, lad. We'll share out with you a bucket full of gold and jewels. Excuse me. No, replied, replied the prince flatly, as if he'd been offered a bucket full of coal. Don't run me out of patience, warned the huge outlaw. The prince remained defiant. I'm staying. Hold your nose, Billy ripped off his leather belt. I'll lash a bit of sense into your head. Jemmy saw that Prince Brat wasn't going to shift his ground. You don't need my whipping boy to get into the castle. There's a better way. Do say, exclaimed Cutwater. My horse, remarked Jimmy. There's your messenger, sirs. Hold your nose, Billy gave a snort. Ha, that fine beast. We've been afoot since our skin poor horse turned heels up. We need a mount in our line of work. Nitwits, exclaimed Jemmy, as if his own princely patience were at an end. With rings on your fingers and gold in your pockets, you can take to the roads like gentlemen. You'll be traveling about in fine coaches. But first, you've got to lay hands on the treasure. Cutwater made a sound through his nose like a pitch pipe. With that horse outside? One of the king's own. A horse can always find his way home, can't it? The fine beast will make for the castle stables. Note and crown. No questions asked. Okay, end of chapter 11. Um, so Jemmy will not go to the castle. He doesn't want to go back. Okay, and so Jemmy does not want the prince to get whipped. So he said, well, strap the note and the crown to the horse and the horse will find its way back to the stable. Okay, we're gonna read one more here. We'll read chapter 12. It is called, Wherein Jemmy is Betrayed. 
With a gleeful chuckle, Hold Your Nose Billy dropped the ransom note and the golden crown into a dirty linen sack. When he'd knotted the sack to the saddle, he turned to Cutwater. Soon as I'm within a squint of the castle, I'll turn the beast loose. Guard our prisoners. I'll tie him up, Cutwater wheezed, giving his heavy partner a foot up into the royal saddle. From the doorway, Jemmy watched Hold Your Nose Billy vanish into the tangled maze of tree limbs and brambles. Then he glanced about at the bare furnishings, the hanging ropes of garlic bulbs, the bed straw, the chest of stolen goods. He'd need some trickery to escape. The prince fixed him with a smirk. You're clever, all right, but a common dunce all the same. Cough. A cartload of golden jewels. The ruffians would have been content with a mere jingle of coins. Jemmy's eyes swung back to the bed straw. There was his escape. A cartload of moonshine, he said. It'll never be forked over. I'm the prince. Papa will have to pay for it. Jemmy began burrowing like a barn mouse under the moldy straw. Not a bit, he won't. Papa will foam at the mouth. Jemmy was disappearing limb by limb under the straw. Think again. It'll be clear as water the notes a scrambling witted fake. Papa will keep me under lock and key after this. It won't fool a soul, that note. How could you have written it? Everyone in the castle knows you can't so much as sign your own name. I never needed to before. It's me that's in the soup. I'll catch it for your mischief in running away, and I'll catch it again when your tutor claps eyes on the handwriting. He'll say, Jemmy, this is Jemmy trying to line his own pockets. Your Paul scraped me with his bare hands, so I'll be obliged if you'd help me and nip out, out here. I promise you my protection, announced the prince with sudden generosity. Jemmy protects himself, said the whipping boy. When that plaguy cutwater comes to tie us up, I'll tell, tell him I slipped out the door. Soon as he bounces off after me, I'll make a break for it. You'd leave me alone with the cutthroats? Before Jemmy could answer, he heard the sharp squeak of the door, and he held his breath. Lads, you won't mind if I truss you up like a Christmas goose. There came a sudden pause, and Jemmy's heart began to thump. Where's the prince? Cutwater snapped. Jemmy heard Prince Brat answer without the slightest hesitation. Him? Over there. He's under the straw. All right, that's the end of chapter 12. So <laughs> Jemmy was trying to hide under the straw so that he could make a break for it when Cutwater was looking for him. But the prince told, told him that he was under the straw. Okay, so he kind of betrayed him. All right.